Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiwa, an international etiquette expert, author of etiquette books and online courses. If you would like to order my books internationally, you can do so now directly on my website. I'll link it here as well down in the description box below. You can also join my pre-recorded online courses. One is entitled Western Formal Dining Etiquette from A to Z. All you need to know in order to be prepared for formal dining as well as the art of entertaining at home. Both of these courses are pre-recorded, which means you can watch them at your own leisurely time, at your own pace. With both of these courses, you'll receive a certificate of completion. I've also noticed recently on my channel that the number of the subscribers are growing on my channel, whereas the number of viewers are not. And that's because a lot of you don't get to see the new videos that I upload. So I urge you, if you're subscribed to my channel, hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure that you do. Before I get started with today's video, I also want to announce that at the end of each video, so make sure to watch this video until the very end, I will be showing the outfit of the video, a new term that I've coined, OOTV, will be shared with you, the details, the labels, everything you want to know about what I'm wearing for this video. And now let's get started with today's video topic and that is basic manners everyone should have. Uh, this is a list of, of manners that I've put together from my personal observations of how people are carrying themselves out in public. I have recently traveled a lot, so I've, pay, I've been paying attention a lot to how people carry themselves in public places like the airports, metro stations, and, and shops. Uh, so it's a list that I have compiled based on what I think everyone should know in order to improve our overall behavior in public. First things first is holding the door. I cannot just stress enough how important it is to bear in mind that it's important still and it still matters when you take that extra step, you know, take that extra second and hold the door for the person that is coming after you. You don't have to hold the door for the whole crowd that's going to pass through the door, but the person right behind you, you can slightly hold the door so they can pass and then they can hold the door for the person coming. I was recently in London and uh, I was inside of the, of the cafe and I was about to leave the cafe. I was waiting for the cab and I saw this waitress. She was coming from the terrace back inside of the restaurant and she was holding a tray with a lot of stuff on it and her hands were occupied. So I made sure that I opened the door for her and left it open while she was going through the door into the uh, into the restaurant. And she beamed with a smile and she was so sweet. She said, oh, thank you so much. Like, this was so sweet of you. I was like, of course, like, this is something you have to do. There is no need to, you know, you can't thank the person, but she was quite stunned and surprised by this gesture. And I, I smiled to myself and I thought to myself, how interesting we live in a world where when you hold the door for someone, they feel like that's something special, something extra. Whereas we have to include it in our daily habitual behavior in a way that this kind of a gesture doesn't seem anything extra. So holding the door is very important. It doesn't matter what your gender is. If you're a woman or a man, make sure that you hold the door for the person that is coming after you. The second basic manner that everyone should have is knowing where to stand and where to walk when you are on a staircase, when you're on an escalator, I have again witnessed this in airports especially as well as shopping malls where people would just line up the both left and the right hand side of the staircase or the escalator and they would just stand there blocking the traffic for the people that just want to walk. You have to understand that if you want to stand on an escalator or a stair, you'll stand on the right hand side. If you want to walk, you go to the left hand side. So if it's a group of um, three people or say four people or if it's just two of you and you want to have a conversation both of you want to stand then both of you should occupy the right hand side of an escalator or staircase one on the upper one one the lower one and continue talking like that but stay away from the left hand side if you're not going to walk because then you are just blocking the left hand side where people are there to walk i have uh, experienced a sense of frustration uh, especially when i was uh, going to catch a flight uh, from istanbul to london and these people would just line up uh, across the escalator blocking the traffic so i would always have to say excuse me excuse me making my way uh, to the and on the left hand side straight to my gate so that's something you need to keep in mind but i 
I would also note that it's different in Japan. It's the other way around. Uh, either way, the, the majority of the world is abiding by so this kind of a rule, so to speak, where the right-hand side is for standing and the left-hand side is for walking. The third important basic manner everyone should have is addressing the person using their full name. Do not butcher it, do not nickname a person unless you're allowed to nickname them. They've given you the permission to do so. Do not mispronounce it. I have been the victim, so to speak, of people uh, either mispronouncing my name or most often nicknaming me or sweet naming me. They would call me Jamie or, or Jamie. Uh, if I have never allowed you to do so, why would you think it's okay to dress me like that? First of all, I never nickname myself. I don't have these kind of nicknames, so it's it's a misuse of my name. Uh, secondly, we haven't really uh, crossed that boundary where I've allowed you to, to nickname or sweet name me. And third, it's important when you are meeting someone, if this is especially a foreign name, instead of butchering it and mispronouncing it. Third, it's important when you are meeting someone, if this is especially a foreign name, instead of butchering it and mispronouncing it, rather than asking the person how to correctly pronounce it, saying, I'm sorry, like, I've never heard of this name before. Could you please spell it out for me? Could you please tell me how to pronounce it correctly? So it's better to be asked how to do it correctly rather than do it uh, intentionally and do it miscorrectly. The more respect you show to someone's name, the more they will feel comfortable around you or rather the more trust they'll feel towards you. Uh, treating someone's name correctly is very important, especially where you're about to start a new communication. Address the person with their full name unless they've allowed you to nickname them or uh, name them any other way. The next basic manner when it comes again to interacting with people, especially in crowded places um, and venues, is knowing that, or as well as the elevators, is knowing that before you put yourself into the room, before you get into the elevator, before you enter a classroom, allow the people that are inside to exit first and only after step in. I cannot reiterate this enough because I have again witnessed over and over again how in classrooms, in meeting rooms, um, in hall rooms where there's like meetings and gatherings and business and networking events, how people will just step in without allowing the people in the room to exit. If there's like a coffee break or um, in, in an elevator, um, so an elevator stops on the floor and before they let other people get out of it, they already put them themselves into the elevator. Always wait until the people in the room exit and only after enter. The next basic manner is something that is so simple, something that we are constantly told about as we're growing up as kids. But somehow in this hectic world, in this busy world, we're trying to save time on a lot of things, um, but then wasting it on scrolling useless content. Uh, is that we forget to say thank you, we forget to say excuse me, we forget to say please. These are just very short words that really uh, don't take much time to pronounce, to utter, but in reality they allow you to establish a good relationship or um, have a better um, rapport with the person you're having conversation with. And also something I've noticed particularly by observing other people is they are especially forgetting to use these words when they're around people that are in a service industry that you know they're they're paying to um, to do a service say it's a manicurist is a hairdresser it is um, it's someone in a salon or it could be someone as a waiter in a restaurant uh, or a cab driver a lot of people think like if i'm paying i don't have to say all these words it's I'm paying for the action to be done. So just by the by the fact that I'm paying them, I can just completely completely omit these words. But it's especially important to use these words when you are uh, in interaction with people from service industry. If a cab driver offers you to open your door, say thank you so much. If the waiter brings in water and pours your glass of water, say thank you. You don't have to say thank you at every single step because then it might be also annoying even for the waiter, but you have to acknowledge their action of service towards you. So if, if the first act that they did was 
I pour a bottle of water to you, then you say thank you. And then maybe um, at the end when you know they brought the check, you could say thank you. So you would keep it moderate, but you would make sure that you use these words in interacting with people, not just from the service sector, but in general. But I want to stress the importance of saying thank you and please and excuse me to people that usually are unfortunately overlooked. The next basic manner that I often find is lacking is the understanding and the respect of a dress code for a particular event or a particular occasion or a meeting. Um, again, as fashion is changing, so are a lot of rules about dress codes and a lot of rules of what is acceptable and what's not. You know, if back in the days women were not allowed to wear pants, now it's a given thing. We can include it in a lot of uh, dress codes. You can wear a, dress, a pantsuit to a cocktail party. Um, so fashion is changing and so a lot of rules are around it as well as it's reflected in the etiquette as well. But being appropriate for wherever you are going is so important. Uh, knowing what is okay to be worn where. It doesn't mean you have to be restrictive when it comes to expressing yourself through your style. It just means know how to work around your style and being appropriate to a particular occasion that you're going to. It's then important to familiarize yourself with different kinds of dress codes that exist um, and what each dress code entails. By the way, in my book, The Etiquette Ladies You Need to Know, I describe all different kinds of dress codes and what is appropriate to be worn for such occasion. You can check out my book that's on sale uh, for worldwide shipment on my website. I'll link it here as well in the description box below. The next uh, basic manner that I have been observing a lot that I feel a lot of people are lacking is um, not being mindful of physical uh, space and proximity, in particular the touch. There are some cultures that are very okay with being in, in each other's intimate space, uh, so very close by or physical space, whereas other cultures feel completely um, uncomfortable when someone invades, especially someone they don't know in their physical or in their physical space. The way you can understand which culture is okay with that and which is not is by looking or learning about their greeting forms. So, for example, you see that Chinese always try to keep a dis distance from each other. There is no physical touch uh, in the greeting form versus if you say, for example, um, Brazilians or a lot of Latin America love to go for two or three kisses for some hugs. So they love to be in each other's uh, physical space. So knowing these differences is important because when you're interacting with people from different cultures, which is the case nowadays in a lot of uh, countries where you know, we have people from all around the world, uh, pretty much everywhere now uh, due to globalization. Uh, and when you're interacting with people from different cultures, it's good to know what it's okay in their culture and what's not. So you're not invading into the territory where you're not invited. Um, especially when it comes to business meetings, um, you know, some will go for a hug, some will go for a kiss, some will go for a handshake, and you have to observe what is okay and then do as as, as, as respected. And the most important thing I want to stress out here is that be careful with a touch. Uh, you would rather not want to touch uh, unless you see that it's it's initiated by them. Uh, I know I've mentioned in one of my videos about establishing a more friendly relationship that touch is, is essential in creating that kind of sense of comfort and you, you can trust me. So a slight touch on an arm or a start touch, you know, on the forearm can be considered as a way of establishing the rapport. But again, you have to be mindful what is the culture of the person that you're interacting with. The next basic manner everyone should know is have good table manners. Really, that is so important. But again, it feels like everyone I've been interacting with um, uh, socially as well as for work, it feels like everyone thinks that they know how to handle uh, them, themselves or how to handle things at the table. But when you see them already at a formal dinner table, I can immediately, within a few minutes, can tell all the things that have been done wrong. And that's again not something that I do intentionally, it's something my eye is trained, my eyes are trained to see, to notice. Of course, I don't pinpoint on that, I don't uh, correct anyone at the table unless it's my work to do so, unless it's a classroom that I'm teaching. But the two most common mistakes I see people do is, especially with women, is placing their bags on a table. This is something that has been done 
many, many times over and over again, no matter how many times I keep on saying bags do not belong on the table, especially when it comes to formal dinner, you never place a bag on a table. For formal occasions, you never big, bring a big bag. You have to go for a clutch or a smaller bag that can fit on your lap. You'll place your bag and then cover it with a napkin. So it's well protected, it's under tucked in, protected, safe, under the napkin, out of sight, uh, but it's in a safe place. Uh, this is very important to remember. And the second thing I see most often as a mistake uh, is that people usually cut the bread with the butter knife. So, you know, there is this bread plate with, with uh, bread uh, and with a butter knife. And a lot of people go ahead and use the butter knife as the bread knife. Uh, there is no bread knife at the formal dinner table. You don't cut that bread. You will tear it down to pieces using your fingers. Never cut a bread. Uh, there are a lot of rules that I see broken at the table, but these are the two rules that I see immediately being broken within a minute of a dinner table. The ninth basic manner that I have been uh, observing that lacks in a lot of people is learning to wait in line, learning to keep the distance with the people when they're waiting in line, be it in the airport, be it in a cashier waiting to pay, make the payment, be it in a line for the ATM machine. For some reason, the person behind you feels like if they're standing closer to you, they will get to the cashier faster or they're going to, going to get into the ATM machine faster. It really doesn't work that way. No matter how much time I need to take with a cashier, that is the time I will be taking with a cashier. Even if you stand right behind my back or if you're a few steps behind my back, it is important not to be invasive when it comes to places where people are making a payment, they're waiting in line, um, be it at the bank or be it even in their airport, always mind the distance. You don't want to be breathing into someone's back. And that's the basic manner that I see often being broken in a lot of public places. And the tenth basic manner that we see bro being broken pretty much every day, online and offline, is when people say things they later regret. You know, there used to be this saying that said, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all, uh, which I think is very good advice. It doesn't mean that you have to hold, hold your opinion to yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't have to share your opinion uh, because or speak um, or dishonestly. It just means if you your comment is not going or your, your remark is not going to add value to the person's life or is not going to bring any change um, to what is happening, then better keep it to yourself. Uh, your words will have more weight or more respect and more admiration if you have been asked for that opinion. If someone asks you for what you think about that and only when you say it, it means more than when it's unsolicited. Same goes with advice. Um, I see a lot of people regret what they said um, in person. Uh, unfortunately, once the word is out, you can't grasp it, take it back. But worse is when people say things online that can be screenshot, that can be saved, that can be forwarded, and that can ruin careers, relationships, uh, friendships, um, just life in general. Um, there are a lot of people that did say something way back 10, 15 years ago and they, you know, it just, it just wasn't noticed. And once these people were at a certain point in their career, that those words came biting them back. So you have to really be careful about what you say, not just in person, which is very important, but more so even offline, uh, online, where everything can be traced. Because I assure you, one day you'll regret about what you said. So be careful and mindful with the words that you use. If you would like to learn more in depth about etiquette, I urge you to join my etiquette movie club where every month I do a movie analysis from an etiquette standpoint of view. So far I've done over 30 different movies and by joining my etiquette movie club now, you can see all those movies. It's the kind of a content that you'll not see anywhere else and it's a really in-depth analysis of etiquette lessons learned from movies. So the outfit I chose today was actually based on the flowers that I had at home. Uh, so the flowers that you saw in the video, which were pink tulips, I chose an outfit that would match them. 
and this is a shirt that I have from Zara. It's a linen shirt that is quite short. I love this kind of um, uh, short cut shirts because you don't have to really tuck them in or really have a lot of layers underneath. Um, I can wear them with jeans like I've done now or with a skirt in the summer or sometimes if it's breathy in the evenings I'll wear a dress and I'll just put this shirt over the top. Uh, so it's very versatile in its use in my wardrobe and I love the color as well. Um, this was the shirt I think I bought two years ago maybe. I have these uh, jeans from Citizen of Humanity. It's one of my favorite jean brands. Um, I think they are very fitting. And again, I have had these jeans for, I wanna say seven, eight years. I know I wear things really well. And uh, these are high rise jeans and I have them in, I have actually two pairs of these jeans or maybe three. If I love something, I'll buy it in multiple um, copies or in multiple uh, items and because I never know if they're going to be out of stock later on if they're stop producing this kind of fit so I find these jeans super comfortable and I have paired my whole look with my Chanel sling bags uh, these are in two tones so black and blue uh, light baby blue they're very nice uh, not just for summer or spring but sometimes in winter uh, if it's not too cold I will wear them with my work pants or uh, and again I can wear them in the fall um, these Link bags are super comfortable so if you're uh, looking to make an investment into a good piece of uh, branded shoes I'll say Chanel sling bags are the first item that you should get thank you so much for watching this video until the very end I hope that you enjoyed it and if you did please give the thumbs up and do let me know down in the comment section below what are some video suggestions you have for me as well as what are some other rules or basic manners that you would recommend adding to this list I love reading your answers and your feedback and I hope to see you in my next video Thank you. Bye.